And as for the continuation, what occurs on page 335, point number 65, then Imam al-Barbahari, rahimahullah, he said, la وَلَا يُعَذِّبُ اللَّهُ أَحَدًا إِلَّا بِقَدْرِ ذُنُوبِهِ وَلَوْ عَذَّبَ أَهْلَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَرَّهُمْ وَفَاجِرَهُمْ عَذَّبَهُمْ غَيْرَ ظَالِمٍ لَهُمْ لَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ يُقَالُوا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّهُ ظَالِمْ وَإِنَّمَا يَظْلِمُ مَنْ يَأْخُذُ مَا لَيْسَ لَهُ وَاللَّهُ لَهُ, والله له الخلق والأمر والخلق خلقه والدار داره لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون ولا يقال لما وكيف ولا يدخل أحد بين الله وبين خلقه The saying of Imam al-Barbahari رحمه الله And know that no one will enter paradise except by the mercy of Allah and that Allah will not punish anyone except according to the degree of his sins and if he were to punish all the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth the righteous and the wicked amongst them then he would be punishing them without being unjust to them and it is not permissible to say about Allah, the mighty and majestic, that he is unjust. Since the unjust is the one who takes something that is not his to take. Whereas creation and decree is for Allah. The creation is his creation. And the world is his world. He is not to be questioned about what he does but they will be questioned and it is not to be said why and how and no one can enter between Allah and his creation Shaykh Fawzan he said in explanation his saying وَأَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا يَدْخُلُوا أَحَدٌ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا بِرَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ and you should know that no one will enter paradise except by the mercy of Allah Sheikh Fawzan said, Al Jannah, paradise, is expensive and exalted, and it cannot be reached through deeds. No matter how much a person works, and even if he does all the acts of obedience, then his, his deeds will not meet up. To the, to the favours that have been bestowed upon him. His deeds will not meet up to the favours that have been bestowed upon him. So if he were to be brought to account for the favours, for the ni'am, if he were to be brought, brought to account for those favours, then no deed would remain for him. This is from one aspect. And if his deeds were piled up against the favours of Allah upon him and measured against measure, his deeds will disappear and vanish in comparison to the favours of Allah upon him. She has said this is one aspect. The second aspect is that paradise is expensive and it does not have a price that can be assessed in terms of deeds or wealth or other than that. No one knows how tremendous it is except for Allah, the perfect and most high. However, Allah enters the believers into paradise by his rahmah, by his mercy. On account of their deeds, by, by means of their deeds. So deeds are just a sabab, deeds are just a means towards entry into paradise but they do not necessitate entry into paradise I've made the distinction there no 
without performing righteous deeds is a means towards paradise. But they do not, no matter what you do, it will not necessitate that you have the right to enter into paradise, no matter how many deeds you do. They do not necessitate entry and will not, will not necessitate entry into paradise. Nor are they the price for paradise. And therefore he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَدٌ مِنْكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ بِعَمَلِهِ No one from amongst you will enter into paradise through his deeds. Shaykh said, this is, I mean this hadith was stated, this is in order that a person should not become amazed and complacent at his own deeds. It is not stated so that he should abandon performing deeds. In other words, no one should take this hadith to mean there's no point, no point performing deeds then. You can't get into paradise through deeds, so there's no point performing deeds, so I'll stop performing deeds. That is not what is meant and should not be understood from this narration. Rather, as the Sheikh said, it was said, in order that a person should not become amazed and complacent at his own deeds. But it was not stated such that he should give up deeds. He said, and his saying, he the most high, Udhulul Janna Tabi Makun Tum Ta'amalun. Sort of Nahal, the sixteenth Surah, I thirty two. With the explanation. Enter into paradise. On account of that which you used to do. Sheikh Razan said, referring to what he Bima kuntum ta'amalun. Because of that which you used to do, on account of that which you used to do. He said, the ba here does not show compensation or a price. It doesn't mean that you've paid the price, you've done the deeds now, therefore you've, you've paid the price for entering into paradise, you've, you've earned your due compensation. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean enter into paradise because you've paid the price for that. No. He said, rather the bar here, bima kuntum ta'malun, is to show a cause or a means. Meaning, by means of that, those deeds that you used to do. As is shown by the hadith, hadith that you mentioned just before, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَدٌ مِنْكُمُ الْجَنَّةَ بِأَمَلِهِ The Prophet sallallahu said, none of you will enter into paradise through his deeds. So they said, وَلَا أَنْتِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Not even you, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, وَلَا أَنَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِ اللَّهِ بِرَحْمَتِهِ Nor even me, unless Allah covers me with his mercy. In a footnote, the mention reported by Al-Bukhari in his Sahih, and the hadith number should be hadith 6463. 6463. And Muslim in his Sahih, hadith 2816, from a hadith of Abu Huraira. Anh. The Shaykh said, So a person should not become amazed at his own deeds. However, a person will not enter into paradise except by means of actions, by means of deeds. So if a person did not, com did not perform any deeds, he will not enter paradise because he has not carried out the means. And the Sheikh is making the point here, again, that deeds are a means towards paradise. If you don't carry out the means, then you will not enter into paradise. And if you carry out the means, then Allah, from His mercy, will enter you, insha'Allah, into paradise. And He said, His saying, وَلَا يُعَذِّبُ اللَّهُ أَحَدًا إِلَّا بِقَدْرِ ذُنُوبِهِ And Allah does not punish anyone except in accordance with the degree of his sins. Sheikh Barzan said, Paradise is fadl. Paradise is a favor from Allah, the Majestic and Most High, and is through the mercy of Allah. 
and deeds are a means for entry into it. And the people of the fire will not be punished except in accordance with their sins. They will not be punished because of the sins of other people. And they will not be punished whilst not having sins. So this is from Adol. This is from justice. So paradise is from Al-Fadl, from favor, was favor. And the fire is from Al-Adl, is from justice. And he said, he's saying, وَلَوْ عَذَّبَ أَهْلَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَرَّهُمْ وَفَاجِرَهُمْ عَذَّبَهُمْ غَيْرَ ظَالِمٍ لَهُمْ He said, and if he were to punish the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, the righteous ones of them and the wicked ones of them, then he would be punishing them without being unjust to them. Sheikh Fawzan said, this is just as, as has proceeded. That a person, no matter how many deeds he performs, then his deeds will not match up to even a part of the favours of Allah upon him. So if Allah were to punish him, that person, if Allah were to punish him, that would be justice. Because of his falling short in giving thanks for the favours of Allah upon him. And this speech, Shaykh Fazan said, and this speech which he mentioned is the text of a hadith from Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَوْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَذَّبَ أَهْلَ سَمَاوَاتِهِ وَأَهْلَ أَرْضِهِ لَعَذَّبَهُمْ وَهُوَ غَيْرُ ظَالِمٍ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ رَحِمَهُمْ لَكَانَتْ رَحْمَةٌ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِهِمْ The saying of Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم If Allah were to punish the inhabitants of his heavens and the people of his, of his earth then he would punish them and he would not be being unjust to them. And if he were to be merciful to them then his mercy would be better than their deeds deserved. In a footnote they mention this hadith is reported by Imam Ahmad and his Musnad and by Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah and Ibn Hibban and others from a hadith of Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu. And it was declared authentic by Ibn Hibban and by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab in Kitab al-Tawheed. And as a side point, likewise, Shaykh al-Albani declared it sahih, authentic. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan said, continuing this point, because he would punish the evildoer on account of his evil acts, meaning if Allah punished all the people, the wicked and the good, all of them. If Allah were to punish all of them, then that would not be unjust from Allah. Shaykh Fawzan explained it. He said, because he would punish the evildoer on account of his evil acts. And he would be punishing the righteous person because of the fact that his deeds did not qualify him for entry into paradise. Because he did not match the favours of Allah upon him. And Shaykh Fazan said, he's saying, لا يجوز أن يقال لله عز وجل إنه ظالم. It is not permissible to say about Allah, the mighty and majestic, that he is that he is unjust. Shaykh Fazan said, Allah, the majestic and most high has declared himself free of dhul, of oppression, injustice. Then Shaykh Bazan quotes a number of ayahs proving this. He said, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِذَرْلَانٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Surah Fustilat, the 41st Surah, Ayah 46. The explanation, And your Lord is not unjust to 
to the servant. لا ظلم اليوم إن الله سريع الحساب سورة غافر 40 سورة آية 17 with the explanation there will be no injustice on this day Allah is quick in reckoning ولا يظلم ربك أحدا سورة الكهف the 18th سورة آية 49 with the explanation, and your Lord does not wrong anyone. وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا هُمُ الظَّالِمِينَ Surah so Az-Zukhruf, the 43rd Surah, Ayah 76, with the explanation, and we did not oppress them. However, they were the wrongdoers. وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Surah Al-Nahl, the 16th Surah, Ayah 118. With the explanation, And we did not oppress them, but rather they oppressed their own souls. And then finally, Shaykh Fawzan quotes a hadith to prove this, a hadith Qudsi. يَا عِبَادِي إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا فَلَا تَظَعْلَمُونَ The Hadith Qudsi, where the Prophet ﷺ reported the words of his Lord, he the Most High, that he said, O my servants, I have made oppression forbidden for myself, and I have made it forbidden for you to oppress one another. So do not commit oppression. Do not commit dhulm. In a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Muslim as hadith 2577 from a hadith of Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. And of course, it's a hadith included in the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi as hadith number 24. Shaykh Fawzan said, So Allah, the Majestic and Most High, is a just judge, and oppression, zulm, does not befit him. He said, he's saying, وَإِنَّمَا يَظْلِمُ مَنْ يَأْخُذُ مَا لَيْسَ لَهُ وَاللَّهُ لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْعَمَرُ He said, and oppression is only one taking that which is not his to take, whereas creation and decree is for Allah. Shaykh Fawzan said, explaining, a zulm, oppression, is to take the right of the people. And to wrongfully take the right of the people. He said, and do the people have any right over Allah? They have no right over, over and upon Allah. They have no right, people have no right upon Allah. And no one can make anything binding upon Allah. Rather, the right of the servants with Allah is that, he should, is that he should not punish one who does not associate anything with him. Then he makes an important point. This is a haq. This is a right which he, the perfect, has given as a favor. It's a right that Allah has given. It's not a right they automatically have upon Allah. But that is that people's right they have on Allah. He has to do... No, this is a right... Allah has given to them as a favor upon them. Then Sheikh Fawzan continued, and dhulm, oppression, is, in a different wording, how to, a different definition, different wording of what is dhulm, oppression, he said, and oppression, dhulm, is to put something in other than its due place. So Allah does not put punishment upon those who deserve bliss and he does not give bliss to those who deserve punishment rather he gives bliss to those who deserve it and he gives punishment to those who deserve it and this is al-adl this is justice but as for the opposite then that would be oppression if he were to punish 
the people of Iman, the people of true faith, and bestow honor to the people of disbelief. This would be oppression. And Allah is free of that. It is not possible that He will punish the people of Iman, true faith, and bestow honor upon the people of disbelief. And that He will enter the disbelievers into paradise and enter the believers into the fire. This does not befit Allah, the perfect and most high. And he said, he's saying, وَاللَّهُ نَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْعَمَرُ وَالْخَلْقُ خَلْقُهُ وَالْدَارُ دَارُهُ And Allah, creation and decree are for him. And the creation is his creation. And the world is his world. Sheikh Fazan said, Allah the Most High said, أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْعَمَرُ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Surah Al-A'raf, the seventh surah, ayah 54, with the explanation. Is not creating and commanding His? Exalted is Allah, the Lord and nurturer of the whole of creation. Sheikh Fazan said, explain the first part. Allah lahul khalq. The explanation is creation, or rather is creating not for him, is creating not his. Sheikh Fazan explains, explain what is khalq, what is creating. He said, and it is to bring into existence things, which is to bring things into existence from non existence. So all the created beings were created by Allah, the Majestic and Most High. No one can create along with Allah. Allah, the Most High, said, Allah khaliqu kulli shay, Surah Zumar, the 39th Surah, Ayah 62. With the explanation, Allah is the creator of everything. He said, and He, the Most High, said, Am ja'alu lillahi shuraka akhalaku ka khalqi, fatashabaha al-khalqu alayhim, قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِكُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَّارِ Surah Al-Ra'ad, the 13th Surah, Ayah 16, with explanation. Or do they set up partners for Allah, who they claim create with the like of His creation, such that the creation is confused for them? Say Allah is the creator of everything and he is the one, the overpowering subduer. Shaykh Fazan explains the first part of the ayah Am ja'alu lillahi shuraka al-khalaqu ka-khalqi fatashabah al-khalqu alayhim The explanation Or do they set up partners for Allah who create with the lack of his creation such that the creation would be confused for them Sheikh Fazan said, such that that created by the servant resembles that created by Allah. This is not possible. This is impossible. And under the ayah, last part of the ayah with the explanation, say Allah is the creator of everything. And He is the one, the overpowering subduer. And the Sheikh quotes a further ayah. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَرُونِي مَاذَا أَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُوا مِنَ الْأَرُضِ Surah Al-Ahqaf, the 46th Surah, Ayah 4, with the explanation. Say, do you see that which you call upon besides Allah? Show me what they have created in, upon the earth. Then Shaykh Fazam Ruzan, so I explain the word Al-Khalq, indeed creating is for Allah alone. Wal Amr, he's saying Wal Amr, and the decree and the command is for him. Sheikh Fazan said, is for him, he the perfect. And Al Amr, the command or decree, is legislating and sending down revelation. So the Creator, he is the one who commands and forbids and legislates for his servants whatever is beneficial for them. And he it is 
who forbids them from whatever is harmful for them. And it is not for anyone to command or forbid or to obligate an act of worship or to prohibit anything without a proof. أَمَّهُمْ شُرَكَاءٌ شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Surah Shura, 42nd Surah, Ayah 21, the explanation. Or do they have, or do they have partners who legislate things from the religion for them that Allah has not given permission for? Shaykh Fazan said, So the Amr, the decree, command is for Allah, the perfect and most high. Al-Amr al-Kawni al-Qadari The command relating to what occurs in creation and relating to what is pre-decreed Wal amr al-Shar'i and the command relating to the legislation to what is legislated He commands and he prohibits He the perfect and most high Ala lahu al-Khalqu wal-Amr Surah Al-Araf, Surah, Surah, Ayat 54 the explanation is not create is not creating and the command for him. Then Sheikh Raza makes a, a further point, he said, and he made a distinction between creating and commanding. Between the khalq, creating, and al amr, commanding. So this shows that the command is not something created. Allah's, that which, Allah's command is not something created. And this contains a refutation of the Jahmiya, those who said that the Qur'an is created and that the speech of Allah is created. So Farzan said, so Allah has distinguished, make it, made a distinction between the creation, the creating, and between the command. The command is from his speech and, and, his, and his legislation. And Allah has made a distinction between the creation and between the command. So this shows, this proves that the speech of Allah is not created. A brief side point here, if you remember, this is the same point that Imam Ahmad used in his argument against those who are trying to force him to say that Quran was created. Same point, in the same same eye. Allah the Most High made a distinction between that which is created and between his command. Then Sheikh Fazan mentions the point, Wadaru Daruhu, and the abode or the world is his world. He the majestic and most high. Sheikh Fazan said, and the worlds, the abodes are three. Now he mentions the first, second, and third of them, all the abodes that people have to pass through. Firstly, Daru Dunya, the abode of this world. And he mentions the second, Wadaru Barzakh. And the intermediate period, the second one, the period after death, the period of the gr- in the grave. And the third one, Wadaru Qarar, Wahi al Akhirah. And the third one is the abode of permanent residence, and it is the hereafter. He said, All of them belong to Allah, the Perfect and Most High. He's saying, وَلَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلُ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ And he, meaning Allah the Most High, he will not be asked about what he does. But they will be asked. Shaykh Fawzan said, He cannot be asked about what he does. He the Perfect and Most High. Because his actions contain no deficiency. And there is no flaw in them. No shortcoming in them. So they are perfect and precise. And they never suffer from any deficiency or any shortcoming. And questions are only to be asked about one who has deficiencies or shortcomings in his actions. So Allah cannot be asked about what he does. Who is to be questioned about his deeds? As for why, we, why did you do this? Why did this? It's the person, the person who has deficiencies in his deeds. Then he's going to be questioned about that, his deficiencies. As for the actions of Allah the Most High, as the Sheikh said, 
There is no deficiency in them at all. They are perfect and precise. So therefore he cannot be asked about, his, about what he does. He said, and questions are only to be asked of one who has deficiencies and shortcomings in his actions. So Allah cannot be asked about what he does. Because his actions are perfect and complete. He said, it is not just on account, in this point here, that Allah is not to be asked about whatever he does. There are two reasons. The Sheikh mentioned two reasons. This is the first reason, because whatever he does is perfect and complete. So there's no way to, that Allah is to be asked about it. And he mentions the second. He said, it is not just on account of his overpowering and his lordship, as is said by those who say it, that he cannot be asked because of his tremendousness, he the perfect and most high, and because of his majesty. She has said, however, it is not this alone. Meaning, that is correct. No one can ask Allah. Who can ask Allah the tremendous, the overpowering one? Who, can ask, who is there to, to ask, to stand up to him and ask him? No one. No one can do that. But that's not the only reason he's not to be asked. And because he's, he's overpowering, he's the tremendous one. He's a tremendous Lord, so no one can ask. That's not the only, that's a reason, but it's not the only reason. As some people say, that's the, re- that's the only reason. No. The other reason, is what the Sheikh mentioned first, because his deeds are perfect. There's no deficiency in his deeds whatsoever. So how can he be asked? The Sheikh said, however, it is not this alone. Rather, he, can, he is not to be asked also, because his actions are perfect and precise. They do not suffer from any deficiency at all or any flaws. Contrary to the creation, created being, for he will be asked about his actions because he commits errors and his deeds are deficient and observations are to be made concerning him. So he will be questioned because he is deficient from every aspect except for those who are rendered complete and aided and supported by Allah. Shaykh said, and therefore he said, وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ But rather they will be questioned. The Shaykh said, this is the difference between the Creator and the Created Being. That Allah is not to be questioned, whereas the Created Being will be questioned. Then he brings the final paragraph, here, when he says, he's saying, وَلَا يُقَالُوا لِمَا وَكَيْفَ وَلَا يَدْخُلُوا أَحَدٌ بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَبَيْنَ خَلْقِهِ He said, and it is not to be said, how? How is that? Or it is not to be said, why? And how is that? And no one can enter between Allah and His creation. Sheikh Fazan said, no objection is to be raised about Allah such that it is said why did Allah create such and such and how did Allah create these things this is not permissible with respect, with respect to Allah the perfect and most high rather it is upon us to submit and to comply and to believe that the actions of Allah are perfect and complete and do not suffer any deficiency or shortcoming. So even if some of the points of wisdom or the underlying reasons remain hidden to us, then still we do not ask about them. Rather we submit. So if we understand the wisdom and the underlying reason, then this is fine. But if we do not reach it, if we do not understand it, then we submit and we do not raise objections to Allah or withhold from action until we know the wisdom or the underlying reason.